Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about how I made this third of my puppets. That is a dragon puppet that's quite large, as you can see, and very, very soft. He's all made out of cushions. I originally started with an idea to have a dragon that would drape around my neck and be puppeted. However, once I had built the long body and put it around me, I realized that it wasn't a very comfortable thing to wear. And if I'm going to be wearing a puppet, either for a class or for Renaissance Fest or just because I'm playing around with it, I want to be comfortable. So I, I changed the design about midway. However, the head design did stay the same. And I knew I wanted him to be a patchwork dragon. I have lots and lots of scrap material and I wanted that material to be used for something. So he is made out of lots of different fabrics that I had laying around and I wanted his overall look to be of a patchwork dragon. But I had to start with the construction of the head. I did just use a cushion foam and contact cement to layer the foam onto itself to be able to build the main structure. Uh, there's a partial layer here. There's a full layer that goes the entire bottom of the jaw. There's another layer here to give the chin a little bit of heft. Then there's another full layer for the top of the jaw. A couple of layers for his nose bulge that you can see here and a couple more layers for his um, skull that's coming up. Now he is built to have a spot for your hand that goes into the top jaw and a spot for the thumb that goes into the bottom jaw. And once I had cut all of those pieces of foam, I layered them together with contact cement and then trimmed it all a little bit using an electric knife. I have an electric knife specifically for puppet making. Now, after I had his main construction done, then it was a matter of putting on the fabrics. What I did was I laid fabric on him with the good side of the fabric facing the skull and the back side of the fabric facing up. And as I put pieces, I just pinned them all together to fit the form. And once I had them all fit, then I took it to my sewing machine and I sewed the pieces together and then just put it on him like a glove. I did that for his entire top of his head and the entire bottom of his head. All of that's connected to itself. Once it was on the foam itself, then I glued the fabric to the foam and then put a layer of felt on the top. And it's a heavy duty felt, a thick felt. Put that thick layer of felt on the top hot glued it down and a thick layer felt on the bottom, hot glued it down to seal the edges of the raw fabric that I used to put piece them together. The brow ridge right here is glued, tucked in to the foam and glued so that it stays. The nostrils are done with thread, sewed through one side and then to the other side to give the indentions of the nostrils and just tightened it up like you would do buttons on a sofa cushion. After his main construction was set up, his mouth was a little too tight. So I actually pulled the foam back and separated where it was connected here so that it would be a little easier to open his mouth nice and wide. So you can actually chomp heads with this thing. Um, and then to clean up the edges where I had pulled it apart. I sewed, hand sewed in some little cheek flaps right here and right here. And I put another layer of felt, just a thin felt on the inside where the two pieces of felt had separated. His tongue is made with another piece of fabric that's sewn into a tube and it's just sewn into the back of his throat. And his little spikes made out of the same kind of fabric. And again, just hand sewn onto his head and onto his back. 
Now, his teeth. His teeth are made from white hot glue. I use air dry clay to create a tooth that I like the shape of and I let it dry. Once I had the tooth dried, I pushed it into the same air dry clay to make several forms. Once the forms are in there, you don't have to let the air dry clay dry again. You can take hot glue, in this case white hot glue, and squirt it into the holes, let it set, and you have teeth in the shape that you have wanted them. Previously, I had used regular translucent glue and then painted it with nail polish, but the white hot glue ended up a lot nicer and you didn't have to deal with that nail polish stuff. Now, my favorite part of this dragon is his eyes. If you see his eyes, they're nice and glossy, right? And they are surrounded by fabric. You can see the top of the fabric is a nice red. The bottom fabric is the same thing that I made the tongue and the little spikes out of. And they're just tubed and then hand sewn onto the dragon itself. But the most fun thing about his eyes, excuse me, is that they are removable. The eye just tucks in to that little fabric pocket that I sewed in. And it tucks in very securely because it's kind of deep in there. I just sewed it on the outside. And you can see it's just a bit of fabric underneath the same fabric that was here. It's just sewn onto it. Now the eyes themselves are made from clear plastic spoons that I cut the handle off of and painted on the inside. Because they're painted on the inside, the outside gives you that nice glossy look of an eye. And because they're removable and replaceable, I can have interchangeable eyes. I can put different eyes in this dragon whenever I want to. And they just pop right back in. And of course, because I'm doing this facing a camera, it makes it a little difficult. But they do pop in fairly easily. You just got to tuck them in to the top and then take that bottom lid fabric and pull it out to surround the eye once again. Now, the dragon's head, once it was done, I had made that long skinny body and it made the long skinny body out of this fabric right here but decided I didn't like that form for him. So I decided to make him a little chunky kind of baby dragon with his little arms and legs. And he has his, his little floppy wings on the sides. And the same thing kind of applied with his head. I just pieced things together, pinned them, sewed them up to make his main structure and gave him a nice round pot belly. He's filled with fiber fill. In fact, the fiber fill is still accessible from the inside uh, in case I need to fluff it up or anything like that. It doesn't come out because it just has the hole right here in the neck. Uh, his spines are that same material that I used in the tongue and around the eyes. And his arms and legs are first machine sewn to themselves and then hand sewn onto the body. So they're just placed on afterwards. I use the, the Henson stitch to place these things on so that you don't see the stitching on the outside of the legs or the arms. It just seals it to itself nicely and strongly so that it doesn't come off. Now, this little dragon puppet can be kind of just carried around in a puppet form. You can carry him around like this, or you can kind of tuck him into you and carry him around like a little baby. He is very, very soft. He's very cushy, and he's kind of a pleasure to carry around. Now, inside of him, beneath where the hand goes to the puppeteering, there is a built-in pocket. That pocket can be used to put things in that you don't want to carry in your hands while you're trying to puppet, but also can be used for a little place for a Bluetooth speaker. And once you have that Bluetooth speaker in there, you can use your phone to make your dragon have sounds. He's, he can roar. He can sound like a kitty cat. He can sound like a monkey. 
He can sound like a lot of different things because he has that speaker in his belly. But this is my third puppet that I've ever made. And he's done with different construction than the first two. And I just wanted to share with you how he was made. Thank you very much. I hope you like him. And if you have any comments or questions about him, please put that below.